what's up, East High? How you guys doing? This is sixth hour, right? Okay, cool, 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 cool. So school's almost out. You're almost in the clear. It's Friday. So I just want to talk to you guys for a little bit, and then we're going to play some music, if that's cool with you guys. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. I just want to talk to you guys about um, my experience with bullying. I know it's, uh, it's overrun. You hear it all the time. But um, I want to talk to you about what I've experienced as a musician, as a female musician. Well, don't let them get in your head. That was my personal anthem. That was my, what I started to tell myself when I would feel intimidated, when I would feel threatened, when I would feel small and stupid and worthless. I just had to keep reiterating this phrase to myself. And you guys, you guys probably already have something that you tell yourself when you know you're being threatened or intimidated or you feel dumb or worthless. When I was about your age, probably 14, I don't know, what, what class is this? Freshman? Sophomore? Junior? Sophomores? Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> so when I was about uh, 13, 14, I started off at a really conservative high school. And um, I was weird, and I was called dork and nerd and psycho and weird um, because I was an artsy kid, and I wanted to sing, and I wanted to play rock music, and I had a guitar, and I wanted to be real cool, and I didn't have many friends. And so... Uh, all the girls would make fun of me and call me, call me names. And um, what I started to do was just take all of it and build creativity. I knew what I wanted to do and I knew what I wanted to be. And I just had to take their words and build my own personal armor and take it, make it something creative. And you guys can do that too. It's your responsibility to do that. You know what you want to do. You know who you want to be. And you have to keep telling yourself those power phrases. Be your own hype man. Nobody else is going to watch out for you. You got to watch out for you. Take care of yourself and tell yourself those phrases. I can't hear the bullies over my amp. Yeah, I would just turn up my amp. The louder I would sing, the louder I would get on my guitar. I couldn't hear the things that they would say. I couldn't, those things that they would tell me online, things I would see on my YouTube channel. Lots of love, get lots of encouragement, but also the little things I would hear really hurt, really hit me hard. And um, the more I would hear, the more I would feel suppressed and threatened about the things that I wanted to do the power that I knew that I had, the potential that I knew that I had, the more that I felt like that was being threatened, the louder I would turn up my amp, the louder I would sing, the more I would put all of that suppression into something creative. And you guys can do the same thing. I hope you're actually doing that right now. You're at an age where you know what you want to do, you know how you are creative, you know your passion, and uh, you're responsible to do it. You're responsible to make yourself. So. Why do bullies bully? Why do bullies bully? Does anybody have an idea why bullies bully? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> or maybe not parents, but somebody in the family, you know, when they're at home, we have no idea what their situation is. Not a clue. We don't know what they go through. The dad's yelling at the mom. The mom's yelling at the kid. The kid's hitting on his teddy bear. It's the chain of command that we don't know about, guys. This, the bully, we have nothing to do with what they're going through in their home life. We have no idea what they're going through. We have to actually have a little bit of empathy for them because they're struggling, they're having a hard time, they have no self-esteem, they feel worthless, and they take it out on us. Bullies are not born. Bullies are made. Bullies aren't, mean. The bullies aren't born tough and mean and cold and terrible. They're made that way. We have nothing to do with that, though. That's, not, that's them. That's their story. It's not yours. What they say does not define you. It is not your story. It is not your life. And if you feel threatened or intimidated, this one was really important to me. So when I transferred here, I started finding uh, friends that, that pushed me, that would hear me sing, or they knew that I wrote poetry, or they knew that I was trying to play guitar, and they would, they would push me, they'd encourage me. Friends that thought I was funny, friends that laughed with me, who got me, who understood me. You guys know those friends. You hopefully already have them. But you also know the friends that don't do that, the friends that take from you, the friends that take your take your spirit, take your enthusiasm. We call those psychic vampires. When you leave their presence, you feel, you feel less than yourself. You feel less whole because they take from you. Those are your frenemies, your friends. They call themselves your friends, the ones that are jealous, the ones that manipulate you. Folks, those are not your friends. You have to find the people that encourage you, that push you, that see the best in you, that laugh with you, that get your weird humor. You gotta find your squad, find your people, find your what hype man, get your hype man. Get people that love you and get you. Mentors, teachers, adults, role models, people you look up to. 
You got to find those people and surround yourself with them all the time, as much as you can. Be with your people. And teachers too, guys. We are in a community, and I know this for a fact because I've been many, many places. I've been to many schools, middle schools and high schools. And I know that Wichita has an incredible community of mentors, teachers, adults here. The, the community in Wichita is unbelievable. You have a plethora of resources for your creativity, for your strength, to find a good community who believes in you, to find a family of your own. Make your own family. Find your own family. If it's not working at home, if things are tough at home, you can make your own family with your friends or creative, supportive people that believe in you. So find those people and surround yourself as much as you possibly can with them so you can build up your tolerance against people that suck you dry. And cyberbullying. And this is something I know I've read all the haters online, I got on my YouTube channel, I got tons of love and I love reading it and it makes me feel real good, but the little comments about who does she think she is, oh, those just kill me, those kill me. But you can't, you cannot engage. Um, I have people that anti-bullying music video, these are kids, these are 400 middle school kids who are singing this song. What a great message. And I have people that don't like it. They take the time to put the thumbs down. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you have no life. These people have no life. It's the laziest, most, the laziest and most cowardly form of bullying. These people have no idea, and they also have no idea the consequence of what this person who's reading these comments. I read those things, yes, there's lots of love and the encouragement, and I read the comments, and I'm like, ah, oh, it feels so good. But the one little time where it says, who does she think she is? And I see that on my YouTube channel. Who does she think she is? I'm like, and of course it's by somebody for, uh, anonymous. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's your world, that's their world. They sit there all day and just judge, judge, judge. That's their life. That's all they got. They, have, they don't know who they are. They don't know that they're special. They don't know how they shine. They don't know their passion. Because whatever circumstance was in their background pushed them down so much, they have no idea how to be anything. So all they do is spend online looking up other people and judging people all the time. And they don't realize that this consequence is fatal to these kids. It is fatal. If you know somebody that is having a problem, you have to tell an adult. And this is not tattling, I'm not talking about that. This, you have to find responsible mentors, the people that you trust, adults that you trust, that are cool, that you believe are important people. You have to go to them. If you know somebody that's having a problem, it's on you now. It's your responsibility. Folks, these kids are, it's taking very little amount of bullying for these kids to give up on themselves. And it's our responsibility to change that. All right, we can go to the next one. So, you can see theater here and art. And like I said before, for me, theater and music were my saviors. That's what helped me. That's what made me grow. That's, that's, where I, that's where I soared when I figured out how to take all of the negativity and make it into something creative. And all you guys can do that too. You can do that right now. You know what you want to do. You know your passion. You know what you can do. And it's your responsibility. You can't play the card of this happened to me or this happened to me in my family life. My, we're poor, da, 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 da. You can't do that. You can do whatever you want, folks. We are in a part of the country where there's a, an amazing amount of resources, of good community leaders, of people that are loving and encouraging. There's a ton of resources here. I am a musician. I'm making a living at, at being a musician in the middle of the country. What? How does that happen? Because I found good people that have encouraged me, that have helped me, helped me get a guitar or pushed me for a show or... You have people around you that can help you. You cannot play the card of this is wrong in my life or this. You can do it. You are responsible to make yourself. You are responsible to be what you want to be. You can take the negative. You can take all the negative energy every time, all the suppression, and you can turn into something creative, turn into something positive. The whole band has, has, uh, has been a victim of bullying, and now we play loud rock and roll, and that's how we overcome it. Bullies are scared because you're different. Bullies are scared because you're different. They're scared that you're unique, you're different, you're quiet, you don't engage, you're not a social codependent person, you're real alone, you kind of go off on your own. Bully, that bothers bullies. Bullies want you to be hurt by what they're saying. Bullies want to watch you be affected by what they're doing. And when you don't engage, oh, that really makes a bully mad. But it also makes a bully give up. Bullies are mad because you're different. They see that you're unique and special. They don't know how to be special yet. They don't know how to be different. They don't know, because of their situation that we don't know about, they don't know how to shine. They don't know how to be something. 
So they see you and they see that maybe you got something going on and they want a piece of that. So they try to take it just little by little. Now let's see here, yes. And the great El Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, a pioneer in women's history, no one can make you feel well, she says, no one can make you, no one can intimidate you unless you let them. No one can make you feel less than you are unless you let them. When you engage, when you allow them, when you hear what they're saying, you've been infected, you've already been bitten. You allow that in, you cannot, you are responsible for that. Hold on to yourself, have a personal armor, know what you're meant to be, know what you're meant to do, guys. It's your responsibility, you can do it. But you have to keep going, take a step every day. So thanks guys for listening. We're gonna play some music now, is that cool? <laughs> okay.